Blue Room. How is everybody today? Hope you're having a great day so far. Well, want to sing hello with me? Let's see if everybody can sing. I would love to hear your voices for real, but I'll imagine that I can hear you singing. Okay. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Now in Spanish. Hola, 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 y como estas? Muy bien, muy bien, y espero que tú también. And now sing with me in French. Bonjour, 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 et como ça va? Ça va bien, ça va bien, et j'espère que tu vas bien aussi. Wow, great to see you guys. Well, it's a new month. I've got my calendar. Remember last time I saw you, it was the last day of April. So today, it's a new month. It's May. So let's look at the picture. Let's look at this calendar. Remember I showed you this a long time ago. There's the cover. This whole calendar has horses in it. So remember we looked at January was snowy. February was the person trying to teach her horse how to round up cattle with a fake cow. <laughs> so funny. March was a horse in a race with a very fast cart. And then you remember April was our horse in the green forest. Let's see what May is. I'm excited to see a new picture. There's May. That is a beautiful horse. And I see green grass behind the horse. So here's our new month. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Not very many numbers. And in Spanish, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. And in French, un, deux, trois, quatre. I wonder, Pip, can you help us remember how to count in German? Eins, zwei, drei, Theater. Wow, good job. Okay, well, that wasn't very mon many numbers. It's a new month. So let's see what day it is. It's not Sunday. It's Monday. Let's raise our hands on Monday. Get ready because it's going to come up fast. Ready? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Get out your snappers. Days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Great job. Well, I'm really excited because this week we're going to learn a lot about honeybees. And I know you've met my horse, Moonwalker. I know you've met my chicken, Victoria, and you've met my dog, Banjo, but I also have some other friends, and you're going to meet them this week, okay? So I'm really excited because they are, I have lots of honeybee friends. So today we're going to read a story about honeybees and learn a little bit, and then next Wednesday we're going to go see them for real, okay? So here's a story. This is called Honeybee Man. And it's by Layla Nargi and Kristen Brooker. There's what the cover looks like. The Honeybee Man. One quiet July dawn, Fred rolls out of his bed and into his slippers. He greets two members of his enormous family. Good morning, Copper, he calls to his dog, still curled up on the rug. Good morning, cat, he calls to his cat named Cat. He stretches, she stretches in a pool of sunlight. Fred shuffles downstairs to the kitchen and fixes a cup of tea. He takes his teacup in one hand and creaks back upstairs, then up another flight, climbing a ladder that climbs the wall. He pushes open a hatch and pulls himself up onto the roof. There he is drinking his tea. Here 
he is. He lives in, a, in an apartment building in Brooklyn, New York. And there he is climbing up onto the roof. And look what's up there. Those look like beehives. All around is quiet Brooklyn City. Brownstones and linden trees, a tall clock tower, and bridges in the distance. Near the edge of the roof is another tiny city. It has three houses, each with two white stories and one red story, and inside thousands of tiny rooms made of wax. From the outside, the tiny city also seems quiet. There he's climbing up, and there are his beehives. Fred inhales the smells of a summer city morning. Maple leaves and gasoline and the river and dust. He turns to the tiny city and inhales its smaller, sweeter smell. A little like caramel, a little like ripe peaches. To the first little house, Fred calls, Good morning, Queen, Queen Mab, Queen Mabe. And to the other two houses, Good morning, Queen Nefertiti, Good morning, Queen Boadicea. Then Fred greets the rest of his family, which has more members than he can count. Good morning, my bees, my darlings. There's Fred smelling all the smells of the morning. And there he is greeting each hive. All those thousands of bees. Inside their houses, the three queen bees and their thousands of worker bee daughters don't answer. But Fred knows they are busy. The queens are laying eggs. Some workers are building wax rooms. Some are feeding babies, and some are making the hive tidy. Others are getting ready to forage for flowers that bloom all across Brooklyn. There they are. That's where they look like inside their hive. Fred closes his eyes and lets his mind wander. Will Queen Mabe's daughters find mint flowers as they did last year? Will Queen, Queen Bodicea's honey be dark like molasses or light and clear like amber? And he thinks about honey. Fred's mouth begins to water. I can't wait to find out. Fred pictures the park at the end of his block. He imagines his bees moving from clover to clover, flying over them low and slow with their see-through wings which flap and also twist like propellers. Fred wishes he could fly there with them and the wind rushes over his back. He's imagining himself flying. Do you ever do that? That's kind of fun. Okay, let's see what happens. Fred opens his eyes and the hives are alive, humming with a low hum, as low as a whisper. Fred hums back. Tell me what it's like to fly through the world. Zzzz, hum the bees. To Fred, this sounds like an answer, if only he could understand. Young bees on their first flight circle in the air. There, there, my girls, don't be afraid, Fred says in a soothing voice as he speaks. The young bees seem to pluck up their courage. On the streets below, trucks rumble and babies wail in their strollers. But inch by inch, the young bees shimmy past the edge of their tiny city. It is easy for Fred to recognize the older bees, who are used to moving between their small world and the giant world of people. They zip out of the hives and throw themselves at the air, embracing it with their wings. A few land on Fred's arms. Hello, Fred, they seem to say. Hello, girls. Have a nice day. Now off you go. Fred gives them a gentle flick with a finger, and away they zzzz. Fred watches his bees fly into his backyard garden and other gardens on the block. He sees the bees dive into sweet pea and squash flowers. If he were closer, he could see them using their tube-like tongues to drink in flower nectar, which they store in honey sacks inside their bellies. Then it's off to the next pea plant, to the sage flowers in the next backyard, and maybe, if Fred is lucky, to blooming blueberry bushes somewhere across town. There they are drinking nectar from the flowers. 
When the bees return to their hives, Fred notices they are flying slowly, heavy now with nectar. Inside, Fred knows they are performing waggle dances to tell the other bees where the best flowers grow. And the bees really do that. They do little dances, and that's how they communicate to the other workers where to get the best flowers. He knows that sister bees are taking the nectar and storing it in the tiny wax rooms. And he knows that others are fanning their wings to evaporate the water from the nectar so it will turn into honey. Day after day, Fred watches the bees zip over the blare of the city. How tireless you are, he sighs, wishing he could be as strong and free as the bees. One afternoon, at the end of August, Fred climbs again to his roof. He is wearing his black rubber rain boots and his white head veil and a scratch on his hand from Cat the Cat, who did not want to be woken this morning. He makes an announcement to the bees. Sweeties, I have come for the honey and a plea. Please do not sting me. Fred puffs clouds of smoke into the tiny houses and bees burrow deep down into the hive. From the very top floor, Fred lifts out the honeycomb. He packs it into buckets and says, thank you for this honey bees. And they say, zzzz. Fred hauls the buckets down the ladder and into his house where he banishes Copper, the honey loving dog, to the kitchen. Fred sets a frame of honeycomb over a plastic tank and slices off the wax caps and the honey begins to flow. He places the honeycomb in a spinning machine which squeezes every last drip of honey out of it. And he pours the honey into jars and then he sticks labels on the jars. And the label says, Fred's Brooklyn Honey, made by tireless Brooklyn bees. It takes a lot of work for those bees to make the honey. In the late afternoon, Fred sits on his stoop, enjoying the cool end of summer breeze. With his neighbors, when they come out to chat, Fred gives each of them a jar of deep gold honey. One neighbor asks, where did this honey come from? And Fred, sa Fred says in a humming sort of whisper, from the sweet pea flowers in your backyard, from the flowers of the linden trees shading our block, and maybe, if we are lucky, from some sour, sweet blueberry bushes somewhere across town. Up on Fred's roof, the bees are huddled back in their own city, waiting for the rays of tomorrow's sun to call them up and away over Brooklyn. Their wings are tattered from flying, and the nip of autumn is in the air. Soon it will be time to rest. Down on the stoop, Fred opens a jar of honey. The honey glistens and shivers, shimmers in the last of the sunlight. Fred sticks in a finger. There's his street. And there's Fred eating honey. And here's the beehives. See them up on the roof? It is sweet like linden flower, it is flowers. It is sharp like rosemary. It is ever so slightly sour. Ah, says Fred, absorbing these happy flowers. There he is. Well, you guys are great listeners. That was a good story. So I'm going to show you some of the things he talked about. This, remember the wax cells he talked about that the bees make? This is some wax that the bees made, and these are called cells, and each one is a shape called a hexagon, and that means it has six sides. It's a little hard to count, but they have six sides, and that makes them very strong. And I think he told you this in the book, that they use these, this is what they build the inside of their houses with, and they keep the babies living here when they're growing, and then after they hatch, they can keep food in these cells, and nectar and pollen from flowers and they can then keep their honey in here. So it's pretty cool that the bees can make that.
and they know how to make that hexagon shape. I don't know how, but they do. Now this is a frame from one of my beehives. And this I'm going to show you. A little better light. Okay, so they use these cells for different things. This is dark part is where babies were living and they grew up and flew out and became worker bees. This part is where babies are, are under here and they're covered in wax waiting to grow. And then up here is where they put the honey. So the bees set up their hive like this with arcs of what they need. Isn't that amazing? So I just think that honeybees are really cool. And you know, they're really important because they help flowers grow, they help fruit grow, and all the things we eat need honeybees to help them grow because the honeybees land on the flowers and they pollinate. That's a good word to know. Bees are pollinators. That means they help fruit and flowers to grow. Okay, and so we have to um, take care of our world so that the bees can live in it and help us, help us make food. So next time I see you, I'm so excited. We're gonna go visit my bees in my apiary, which is my little city of bees. And you're gonna get to see them um, and you'll see me, but I'm going to be wearing a bee suit, so I might look a little different, but I think you'll still recognize me. So I'm excited to see you on Wednesday up at the bees, okay? But for now, it's time to say goodbye, and I hope you have a great day, all right? And I will see you up at the bees on Wednesday, okay? Goodbye, Blue Room. Goodbye, Blue Room. Goodbye, Blue Room. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, Lily. Goodbye, Nora. Goodbye, Liam. Time to say goodbye. Goodbye, May. Goodbye, Emery. Goodbye, Rosalind. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, Tessie. Goodbye, Evelyn. Goodbye, Beckham. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, Anna. Goodbye, Veronica. Goodbye, Julia. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, Emma. Goodbye, Pip. Goodbye, Arohi. Time to say goodbye. Okay, I'll see you up there at the bees next time.